Joining us now, former director of the Division of Investment Management at the Securities and Exchange Commission, and he's a Trump donor, Norm Champ. Norm, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. Um, so, so again, less companies going public means less options for investors to invest in. But uh, I, what impact does this have then, do you think, on the retirement accounts of investors that don't have access to um, non-public uh, uh, companies? So what we're seeing is the number of public companies in America in the 90s was around 8,000. We're now down to 4,000, so they've been cut in half. What that, and that's a result of Obama, Biden, Harris policies that have made it very unattractive mm -hmm. to be a public company. What does that mean for retirement savers? That means less investment choice. Mm -hmm. That means a lot more risk. The top 10 stocks in the S&P 500 index account for a third of its value. So we're all crowded in the same stocks. And lastly, innovative companies are not coming to market to go public meaning the rest of us don't get access to those investments. So this is terrible for working Americans, retirement savings, which mostly rely on 401ks and IRAs. And this has all gotten worse under Biden and Harris. And Sean knows this. He's not bragging. I don't know. You brag. You should brag about no. this. You were on the financial but services. But not, not during Dodd-Frank, after Dodd-Frank, but financial After Dodd-Frank, after Sarbanes-Oxley, yes. which was uh, about accounting. But it's gotten worse in the last almost four years with re the recent proposals that want to require disclosure of environmental, social, and governance issues at publicly traded companies. So the Wilshire 5000 used to actually be 5,000 stocks. Now it's like 3,500. That's my favorite statistic. Yeah. The Wilshire 5000 is supposed to represent all of the investable stocks in America down to 3,400. To your point on why is it so bad, if you require all of this political disclosure, ESG, CEO pay ratio, you know, extractive resources, you name it. Companies don't do those things, are gonna get that disclosure wrong. They're gonna get sued. It's more expensive to have that disclosure and it's more expensive when you get sued when you have that disclosure wrong. So no one wants to be a public company. And to your point on getting worse, the Biden-Harris administration has choked off initial public offerings, those stats that you showed. So so much of this is legislation, though, requirements uh, and legislation. How much of it comes from the SEC and how much with the Trump administration could be rolled back uh, if there's not a change in legislation? On day one, the review of initial public offerings could be returned to normal order. The idea that... With the they, right chairman. With the right chairman. The idea that those, public, those initial public offerings would get reviewed whenever the SEC gets around to it or they had a novel interpretation of the investment company act to claim that they're investment companies, they basically killed off IPOs, and when you have no supply, guess what? The number's mm. falling. And I will add, Kamala Harris wants to make it worse. The unrealized tax on capital gains has an exemption in it for people who have 80% of their wealth in non-tradable illiquid assets. That means take your company private, don't go public. It will make the problem that much worse on purpose. Thank you, Norm. Thanks. Thanks, Norm.